In this video, I'd like to talk about sequences and their domains. And in previous videos, when we talked about sequences, we assumed the domain would be which term number we're on, where we start at term one, then two, then three, then four. And that's often how it's written, but it doesn't have to be written that way. We could have called this first one zero, then one, then two, then three, or you could be a little bit more exotic with it, maybe call this four, then five, six, and seven. You just need to be consistent, and when writing a formula, you need to make sure that it works with those numbers. So let's consider this specific problem. We have an arithmetic sequence, 10, 12, 14, and so on, where notice that our common difference going from one term to the next, we are just adding two here. And if n is an integer, which of these functions generate the sequence? And this is another important point. In our previous videos, we've talked about how the term number has to be a whole number. So we, in general, do not have fractional or decimal term numbers. We just have one, two, three, or something like that, where they're whole numbers. So in this case, we know that n is an integer, and we just need to figure out which of these actually generates this sequence, which has a common difference of 2, and starts at 10. And it could be multiple answers, so we need to check each of these. Now for this first one, notice that the domain starts at negative 2, since it could be equal to negative 2, and then increases in whole numbers. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, and so on. So what we can do here is just plug in different n values and see if we get back the actual sequence. So let's start with n is negative 2. Notice for that we'd have a of minus 2, which is 16 plus 3 times minus 2, but this is minus 6. So you get 16 minus 6, which is 10, which is what we did start with. But let's do a second example, because this one we're going to notice a problem with this value of 3 here. Since our common difference is 2, this really should be a 2. But let's just check that other example. So when n is negative 1, the next integer in the sequence, for our domain, we have a of negative 1, which is 16 plus 3 times minus 1, or just minus 3 in that case. And we know that 16 minus 3 is 13 which is not the next term in the sequence. So A is not one of the correct answers. Now let's try B. And again, we're just going to plug in different n values. This time it starts at negative 1, then goes to 0, 1, and so on. And so we can start by plugging in n is negative 1 here. So this time our sequence is called B. So B of minus 1 would be 14 plus 2 times negative 1, or 14 minus 2, which is 12. And we should get 10 here, so this is not correct. B is not one of our answers. And going on to C, now C, you can notice, again, has that 3 here. So it might start at the correct term, since if you plug in 0, this will just go away. But that next term, when you plug in 1, it will be 10 plus 3, which is 13. So we at least need this factor here multiplied by n. This needs to be the common difference. So this is our last candidate, and it does have the correct common difference. And for this one, starts at 1, then goes to 2, 3, and so on. So let's plug in some numbers here. So let's say for n equals 1, we have d of 1, which is 8 plus 2 times 1 which is just 8 plus 2, which is 10. So that first term is correct. Let's try the next one. So for n equals 2, we have d of 2, which is 8 plus 2 times 2, or 8 plus 4, which is 12. And that one's correct as well. And as we keep increasing, so if we plug in 3, we get 6. 8 plus 6 is 14. As we keep increasing, we're just adding 2 every time. And that's exactly what's happening here. It has the correct starting value, and it's adding 
the correct number each time we increase this by one. So we saw that C was not right. It had the wrong common difference here, but choice D actually made sense, especially when we started plugging in different in values. So let's look at some different examples. And in this one, we have a geometric sequence, eight, four, two, and so on. If n is an integer, which of these functions generate the sequence? And notice that from one step to the next, this one has a common ratio where we're multiplying by a half or we're essentially dividing by two. And you can see that in each of the formulas, they have the correct common ratio. So we'll have some starting value and then multiply by one half repeatedly. So basically we just need to figure out which of these has the correct starting value, which should be eight. And to do that, we're just gonna have to plug in numbers for the domains that they give us. So this one is one, two, three, and so on. This one starts at two. And again, they're increasing in whole numbers. So let's go back and start with A here. So for this one, we're gonna plug in N equals one. So A of one is eight multiplied by one half to the first power, which is just one half and eight times a half is four. And that right away is wrong since the first term should be eight. So it can't be A. Now let's try choice B here. We'll just this time start with two since it's N is bigger than or equal to two. So B of two, we plug that in, we get 32 multiplied by one half squared now. And one half squared is a fourth. So this is 32 multiplied by a fourth, which is eight. And that is the correct starting value. So this one should work, but let's just prove it to ourselves by plugging in N equals three, the second value in our domain. So we get 32 multiplied by one half to the third power and one half to the third power is an eighth and 32 times an eighth or 32 divided by eight, that is four, which is correct. So B is one of our correct answers here, but we need to choose all the answers that apply. So we have to check all of these. So let's try choice C here, do this up here. We need to do C of three to start out and we have 64 multiplied by one half to the third power and one half to the third we know is one eighth so you get 64 multiplied by an eighth or 64 divided by eight which is eight and that one again that makes sense let's check another one in there so the second term actually starts with an n value of four so we get 64 multiplied by one half now to the fourth power and two to the fourth is 16. So this one half to the fourth becomes one over 16 and 64 over 16 is four. And that is correct as well. So it looks like choice C is a correct option. And just based on the pattern, notice that we're doubling the starting value here and then just increasing which term we start on by one. So it looks like D will work as well, just based on that pattern, but we should check it by plugging in some numbers here. So for D, we'll plug in the first starting value. It starts at N equals four, and we get 128 multiplied by one half to the fourth power, but that's just one over 16. We looked at that over here and 128 divided by 16, that is eight. So that one worked. And let's plug in N equals five here, just to confirm that this works. So D of five, we have 128 multiplied by one over two to the fifth power. And two to the fifth is 32, so that's just one over 32. And 128 divided by 32, that is four. So this, last sequence, this makes sense as well. So in this case, there were three correct answers.